On this leg of our journey, we explore the islands of Gia and Isla. is a most hospitable and appealing little island lying three miles west of the Mull of Kintyre. The landscape is wonderfully diverse with beaches, caves, hills, woodland and lochs. All of this terrain is very self-contained, meaning that gear is easily explored in a day. There are stunning views to be enjoyed from Craig Van, the highest hill on the island. Since Gia is believed to have been inhabited for at least 5,000 years, it offers many sites of archaeological and historic interest. The soil is rich and fertile, and I'm told produces particularly fine potatoes. The church of Kilchatan was built in the 13th century, and there are a number of interesting carved grave slabs dating from the 14th century, both in the church itself and the adjoining churchyard. Achamore House was once the home of Sir James Horlick of the famed bedtime beverage. He left a splendid legacy in the form of what must be the finest gardens anywhere on the west coast of Scotland. Today, Gia is owned by the islanders themselves, the scattered village of Armenish. This is the island's main centre of population. West of Gia lies Isla, the most southerly of Scotland's Inner Hebrides. The coastline of Kildalton is not only attractive, but is home to some of the world's highest profile Scotch whisky distilleries. With its fertile soil and unlimited supplies of peat and water, it's hardly surprising that whisky has been produced in Isla for around 500 years, and that the industry has thrived ever since. Lagavulin Bay and Danuvig Castle play a remarkable role in the island's history. It was from here that a thousand islandmen sailed forth in 1314 to fight at Bannockburn alongside Robert the Bruce, heroic King of Scots. The Macdonalds, Lords of the Isles, used Danuvig as a stronghold since the seas between Kintyre and Ireland could be scanned from here. another picture postcard bay, and another famous distillery. All in all, this would seem a coastline well worth visiting. Isla's townships are quite unique among those of the west of Scotland, and they're all very different. Port Ellen, built around Lodimus Bay, was founded by Walter Frederick Campbell, he was the last of the Campbells of Shawfield, who were landlords of Isla in the 19th century. The village was originally called Port Eleanor, in honour of Campbell's wife. It remains Isla's main port. In the far southwest is the area known as the O the most remote corner of Isla. At the end of the 19th century, however, it had a population of over 3,000. There are ruined homesteads throughout the area that testify to this. According to folklore, the O was also home to little people, or fairies. The coasts are perilous, and many vessels have foundered here over the years. This monument was erected by the American government in memory of those lost when the troop ships Tuscania and Otranto sank in 1918.
Isla is a mecca for ornithologists. Bird life all over the island is rich in variety. Chuffs and golden eagles are frequently sighted around these shores. Almost 200 species of bird inhabit Isla. It's no surprise then that large parts of Isla are now entrusted to the RSPB, including the O. The big strand of Lagan Bay, looking north. Running the length of the sands is the low road between Port Ellen and Beaumore. The River Sorn, where it meets Loch and Doll at Bridge End. The Sorn has been known to yield some fine salmon over the years. South of Pregent and offering splendid views across Loch and Dal is Beaumore. This is Isla's capital in terms of business, commerce and tourism. Isla High School is situated here, as is one of the island's oldest distilleries. Beaumore Distillery was established as the village began to take shape in the 1760s. However, I imagine the round church is the image most closely associated with Beaumore. Strikingly simple by design and situated at the top of the main street, the church pre 